My goal with these videos is to supplement the topic material where needed and provide a Dr. Tom approach to the solution of selected examples in support of participants in our Mechanical Engineering PE exam review courses. If you have not already done so, I invite you to go to our website where you will find other free videos and information about our review courses. There are several course formats to fit your exam preparation needs. And you can contact us at info at drtomsclassroom.com. Okay, let's get started. This instructional companion is what I refer to as a compound beam. Uh, it is really based on uh, example uh, 45.5 in the MERM. Uh, I call it a compound beam because it has uh, two pieces and they are connected by uh, what is referred to in the MERM as a hinge although I sort of like to call it just a pin. It's a pin connecting the two, um, the two uh, pieces of this uh, beam. That's why I guess I refer to it as a compound beam. And uh, what I'd like to do is work uh, a more likely problem uh, than what uh, is posed in the, uh, the MERM. Uh, there they're just looking for uh, the pin force and uh, the reaction over here at D. Uh, and I, I think that just requires uh, just looking at CD. So uh, I think it's more likely that they're going to ask you uh, what this reaction here is at B. And so therefore, just uh, as, as you see in the, uh, the MERM, uh, first they draw a, um, a complete free body. So let's do that. Okay, we have the complete free uh, free body diagram. Their uh, pin, this is the pin symbol uh, 4A. Really the same 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 um, reaction that we have here connecting the two pieces. Uh, two unknowns, and I'm going to label them AH and uh, AV. Uh, we have our 30 uh, kip load, uh, 8 feet from the, from the left. Our BV, that's a roller, uh, just single roller. Uh, of course, this is point uh, C here, although I'm not, we don't need to really label it. We've got 20 kips over here, 4... Uh, four feet from the right, so we have that, and then our DV. Now, in the MERM, um, it's referred to as the, the labeling is like R, R3. Uh, this one is labeled uh, R2, and this one's labeled R1, but eh, I'm not really, I don't really like that notation. Uh, it, uh, one, two, and three uh, really don't reflect uh, the points A, B, C, D. They don't really label those. But uh, as I said, um, uh, the, the MERM asked for just finding uh, DV and the, and the reaction at C here, and uh, that can be done by just looking at this single, single member. And in fact, it sort of um, encourages you or suggests uh, to draw that particular piece, and that's the only uh, separate free body that's provided in the MERM. Uh, I believe, again, that the question would say, uh, what is um, the... Uh, reaction here at B, and when someone drew the complete free body, they would look and see, let's see, I've got one, two, three, I've got four, uh, I've really got four unknowns here, but I've only got three equations, oh no, what am I going to do? Well, that's the trigger to uh, to separate, um, to separate into. That's really the, the the formal thing that you sort of learned in, in statics is uh, is that uh, what happens is is yes, you have four unknowns and only three equations. But if you now separate at a pin, uh, you end up with getting another three equations, but you only increase the number of unknowns by two, the the CH and the CV there. So you then have uh, six unknowns, but you now got six equations and you can solve those. So I think. The, Again, finding BV is the more likely, the more likely choice here. Okay, well let's uh, let's draw those separate free body diagrams both together. Again, the MERM only has one of them. Well, we'll do both of them. Okay, so we've now separated uh, the compound beam into its two pieces: uh, the piece AC and then the piece CD. So we would call these the separate free body diagrams. Uh, again, our pin, uh, pin at A, and our roller out here at D, and our roller at D, at, uh, at B. But now what we have is we've got to make sure we watch uh, Newton's uh, third law. Uh, I just put I put them positive. I don't even think about which things. But 
If I haven't already said that, I don't think about which way things are. There's a, some discussion in the um, MERM about uh, which way things are. No, 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 no. I just put them positive, positive on one and negative, negative on the other. So that, that you've got, uh, and sometimes I actually cloud that in to, to make sure that I haven't violated Newton's third law. I can't tell you how many, how many, how many people make that mistake. They end up with not doing that, and no wonder they don't get the right answer. Okay. Well, uh, in order to, at this point, then uh, you can say, well, in order to find BV, I'm going to need CV. Well, now, okay, now we're going to do equilibrium on this piece here, and we can take uh, moments over here at D and find CV. That's all we need. Well, we could find DV if we wanted to, but um, mainly we're going to find CV, and uh, we'll find out whether it's positive or negative, although I think uh, the direction we've shown here is going to be positive. But again, I didn't do that. Uh, I just did it uh, positive on the right piece, negative on the left piece. Okay, well, uh, okay, so for uh, member um, CD, we're going to take moments at D and get uh, CV. Which if we put, and I, when I do this, so I put my finger there, what we're going to have is the CV is going to produce a positive, and we'll use clockwise on my positive, and my 20 is going to produce a uh, negative. Okay, so so for uh, member CD, uh, my expression here, some moments about D, set them equal to zero, making positive clockwise. Again, this is just my symbology for that uh, equilibrium equation. Uh, and so, as I said, I, I've gotten to where I put a positive out in front just to tell myself uh, that it's the CV times 10 that's positive, not that CV is up. Uh, that has nothing to do with it. You just got that term is positive. And the 20, 20 kips times 4, uh, that one is uh, negative, not because 20, the 20 kips is down. So I've gotten to where uh, in teaching this class uh, to put the brackets there to, to say this is the term that's positive or negative, not the individual terms. Okay, so uh, we can now solve uh, solve this for uh, CV. Okay, and I, again, I do uh, I do the algebra first, then the arithmetic. Although I'd actually check units first. Um, so if we uh, take uh, this to the other side and then divide both sides by 10 feet. Uh, we get 20 kips times 4 feet over 10 feet. The feet's cancel, and so we get our good units here. But the other important thing here is that we came out with a positive. Uh, answer, which means uh, then the direction that we uh, put on our free body diagrams is correct. If it come out to be negative, that's okay. Uh, we would just reverse them uh, in our solution, although we would carry the negative along uh, in with the other equations, but we would just have found that it's just the other way. No need to try to figure out wh which way things are up front. Just put them, put them on, make sure you don't violate um, uh, Newton's third law, and you're off and running. Okay, well, if we went, wanted to, uh, we've now got eight kips, which we can now proceed to find uh, uh, BV. However, at this point, if you did want uh, DV, then you could just uh, say, well, CV and DV uh, have to add up to 20. So, therefore, uh, from the uh, sum of the forces vertically, uh, you would find that um, uh, DV, uh, DV comes out to be 12 kips. Well, let me write that down here for you. Okay, again, uh, what you have extra here is that uh, we didn't have to, but, but it's just over above what we need to do to find BV. Some of the forces horizontally, set them equal to zero, make positive the right. Again, that's my, my symbology. Well, that comes out to be, no surprise, CH equals zero. There's nothing happening left or right on the diagram. And then some of the forces vertically, uh, set them equal to zero. All the forces, known and unknown, make positive up. You can make my positive down if you wanted to, but positive up. And from that, uh, you would get DV is 20 kips minus CV, and this uh, 8 goes into there, so 20 minus 8 gives you 12 kips, and again, don't miss the fact that this comes out to be positive, so the direction that you assumed is positive. Now, that seemed, seemed obvious, but uh, in other com more complex problems, um, this is going to be your uh, uh, comfort zone here, okay? Okay, well, let's now do the, uh, the moment about um, amount A for finding BV. And in fact, let me shift it down here. So again, we're going to take moments about A, because now we know CV. It's uh, positive up here, but it's positive down. I mean, it's po down uh, here. And so we're going to take mo uh, uh, moments here at A clockwise. So the 30 kips is going to produce a clockwise. The CV is going to produce a clockwise, but our BV is going to produce a negative. So we're going to have three terms here to find BV. Okay, let me write those out. 
Okay, so we're getting uh, two pages here so we can see it uh, together. Uh, here again, here's our positive 30 times its uh, distance from A, which was given on the figure as 8 feet. Again, a minus for this term BV times its distance, which is 15 feet. And then uh, this is our um, CV, right? Our CV is 8 kips, and it's another 2, two feet past, um, past B, so that's 17 feet. And it's a positive. Okay, so all we've got to do now is solve for BV. Let's do that on the next page. Okay, as I did with the other one, this is as an extra two terms. I just take this term to the other side and then uh, flip it around so we've got BV on the left-hand side. Divide both sides by 15. Again, I don't do the, the uh, multiplication until I get things down uh, to this particular point. Then we've got uh, 30 times 8 plus uh, 8 times 17 gives us 376 uh, divided by 15. And that's uh, just a tad over 25, uh, but let's just call it 25 whole numbers uh, here. So uh, there's our BV and we'll be done. So we really needed to do, uh, we did need to separate, we did need to find CV, uh, but then um, uh, we find BV. Now, of course, we could, uh, if we wanted to, we could complete the things uh, to find uh, the rest, AH and AV. So uh, let's do that as an extra. Okay, uh, the extra is some forces um, horizontally and uh, uh, no, no uh, surprise that we get AH is equal CH equals zero. Uh, but then some forces vertically, making positive up, we get AV is up, uh, 30s down, uh, BV is up. We came out again with, uh, we got to make sure you realize well, we got a positive. That's not, again, not a surprise necessarily, but, but it is uh, at least uh, comforting now we know for sure. Um, uh, that we now know it's uh, this is up, and then CV, of course, is shown down, but as remember, we found that to be positive. So if we saw we got 30 kips minus BV plus CV uh, equals uh, 30 minus 25 plus 8, uh, and that comes out to be 13. Kind of ran out a little bit room there on the, on the page here. So we've come out with uh, 13 for AV. Okay. Well, one of the things that I like to do now, you wouldn't do this in the PE exam, but uh, um, for, uh, for those that are they're using this uh, in a particular class they might be taking, uh, the thing to realize is that this problem is the start of another problem. So uh, let me show you what that is on this last page. Okay, what I do is I take all the answers and put on uh, what I call, although I didn't come up with it, I assumed it uh, years ago. Um, I think I had some different names that I wasn't really happy with, and uh, uh, you're sort of trying to make sure they balance, and one of the students says, call it a balance-free bodies, and I like that, and I've been using it ever since, probably 20 years, maybe more. Uh, so these are the balance-free body. The one you drew earlier were ones that... Uh, uh, one to help us just account for all the unknowns. Here we have uh, have the unknowns. I mean, the knowns are uh, unknowns are now knowns, and we can actually see that uh, they balance. In fact, we could take moments at, at let's say at this point here and verify our 13 and 25. Take moments at another. Of course, they obviously add up. 13 and 25 are 38, and 30 and 8 go down. So that's that's okay. But uh, that usually always happens. But take moments at another point, and if you've made a mistake, it'll probably show up. And here it does balance. Over here, 8 and 12 is 20, 20, again, we took moments at, um, at D to get CV. We'll take moments at C and make sure things work out uh, without that. But um, this is the start of another problem, because what you would do is put this at the top of a page, and uh, down the page you would go. Okay, and what you're going to be doing is drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams for these. Okay, because you you got to figure out now what's the stress inside in, inside these beams. So you're gonna uh, again, this is a balance-free body is the start of another problem, which may be the subject of another MERM uh, instructional companion. Would be a good one, good one to use. Okay, well. Um, uh, again, uh, I invite you to uh, visit our website as part of your exam preparations. And if you have a question about our courses, please contact us at info at drtomsclassroom.com. Again, thank you for your time, and it has been a pleasure.